get used to that. Wolves move to 10 and 10. That's what's going to happen when the Wolves play good teams, especially the Western Conference teams that are just built around versatility and skill and spacing, shooting. And Tim Connolly gave up an outrageous amount to get the most exploitable player in that type of system. And you saw it tonight. It was extremely evident. I knew that game was over before it started because I heard starting at guard out of Duke, Austin Rivers in our starting lineup, who hasn't even been in the rotation most of the year. And I realized that's because the Wolves' best defensive player was missing tonight. And I heard Gobert called next in the starting lineup because Jaden McDaniels was out tonight with an illness. And so we got to see the Wolves' defense without him. They gave up 137 points. The first quarter was where it was really abysmal. And the Warriors score 47 points. 47 and 27 in that first quarter, they just destroyed the Wolves. And almost every action involved Gobert. Like, he was getting torched. Literally, the first play was actually one Gobert could have made an impact on pretty easily. They run a set to get a lob for Wiggins, and Gobert standing on the block easily could have broken up that lob. He doesn't even jump, and Wiggins dunks on him, and that's how the game starts. Then I believe he misses a layup on our first offensive possession, and everything just cascaded from there. At one point, there was four minutes left in the first quarter. The Warriors had 37 points and were shooting 80% from the floor. And it's not like any team in the league is like, huh, there is no blueprint or way we can figure out how to expose Gobert. No, it happens every year. He's been solved, and you see it tonight in how he's a liability more than an asset on defense in those scenarios, which is all of the scenarios we would likely be in the playoffs, because that's how the best teams have been playing the last several years. So the decision that Tim Connolly made to make us unbelievably vulnerable to that is one that the organization is going to have to live with, and is going to be a difficult thing to recover from with how many any assets we ended up giving up to go the wrong direction. The only thing that kept the Wolves score respectable, as in down about 20 in the first half, was good aggression and scoring from Cat, D'Lo, and especially Jalen Noel. Jalen Noel gets 14 first half points, two assists. He's playing very well. Still struggles to get a lot of minutes in the second half, even with that great showing. Finch never seems to like to lean into what's actually working and always tries to stick with his original plan. Well, if you can even call it a plan, because this team has zero identity, unlike last year. And you never know what the Wolves are going to do on offense or defense. It's always random. And this small Warriors team that's exposing us, they also out-rebound us by 16. Also have more offensive rebounds, too, if that's what you're caring about. While at the same time, the Wolves get just destroyed destroyed in transition. So many wide open buckets for the Warriors. And it's like the Timberwolves didn't know who they were playing because there was so many just step in open threes for the Warriors tonight. They end up making 20. But the Warriors knew who they were playing. They knew how to pick apart Gobert. They've seen it done plenty. They've done it. And Draymond also knows Cat. Draymond, I think, drew three or four fouls on Cat. Cat ended up having four fouls about midway through the third quarter. Didn't really change his playtime at all, but he, you know he's getting the better of that matchup. And Draymond was just like in a full sprint. He played so well today that he was really exposing our bigs and just opening up everything for these Warriors, who missed a lot of open shots tonight, too. They easily could have dropped like 150 plus on us. And you see the huge contrast in styles offensively tonight because you have the great flow of the Warriors offense and the Wolves offense was just like bucket getters getting buckets tonight. I mentioned those three in the first half that were doing really well and only had four points in the first half, didn't really do anything at all. However, would step it up in the second half and then he's just like, all right, we got Ant Isos and Hero Ball to get our points for that half. And there's so little movement from this Wolves offense that's productive that it's just, it's so discouraging. There was a point in the third quarter, I think there was seven or eight minutes left, Steph Curry, just goes down and starts tying his shoe in the middle of a defensive possession. Like 10 to 15 seconds. He's just tying his shoe. Austin Rivers is just sitting in the corner, not moving at all. He's even making it like so they would have to pass like through Steph Curry to even get the ball to him. Also just doesn't take advantage of him being immobile. And no one else is moving either. Like it's just so insane and great of an example of how little this team is working. I was making these videos through that five game winning streak. 
Yeah, th- that was not a good winning streak. They were playing extremely depleted teams. They still weren't playing well. They looked bad most of those games, and they have not looked good in more than probably two games this year now at 10-10. and And the Warriors have actually struggled to start this year, too. That's only their second road win of the year, and they are now 11-10, and I believe. And the Wolves have good pieces, but they don't have the right pieces right now. That's been the most important thing of the Warriors' run. Sure, they had the star power, but they were all stars that complemented each other and worked. That's not what the Wolves have. They didn't have it last year, really, but they were close, and they're farther from it this year, and they gave up a lot of the other elements that helped them, as well as a lot of future elements that just give you ability to make other moves. All of this offseason was a massive setback. This start of the season has not been good. It's not that the Wolves will not be able to make the playoffs or do okay throughout this season, but they set themselves up for what Rudy has had recently of immediate playoff disappointment. Because I said a word I can't say. If you expect more from this Wolves team, well, at least your sad hours will be less long than mine.